Alright, sorry about that. Yeah, this is part two. Unexpectedly. Well, it's either that or basically this is going on for about 45 minutes. So, I'm kind of glad I split this up. Now, I actually, kind of, when I finished my video, I realized, oh, oh crap, I just re one trade. And this would be double shot. So, so, oops. That's my fault. My, my fault, excuse me. So, with this one, we're discussing The Incredible Hulk Epic Collection, Volume 2 The Hulk Must Die. And yes, it is about Hercules and these issues. With the writing all done here by the late Stan Lee and Gary Frederick, art by Steve Vicko, Jack Kirby, Bill Everett, Gil Kane, John Bushma, Mary Severn, Mike Espro, Bob Powell, John Maria Sr., and Jerry Ganiti. This book collects Tales of Sonish issues 60 through uh, 96 and not brand edict number three. Yeah, so this is almost the entirety of the Hulk era from Tales of Sonish. Yep. So pretty much in the way with these issues. Also for some reason the artist, I think it's Steve Dickens these issues. Uh, for some reason, Betty Brand usually is picked with different hair color. Here, here, her hair is a platinum blonde for like no reason. Most of the these issues, we're just trying to reestablish the Hulk uh, as a threat. Now we do see some new characters make their debut in these issues, and you're thinking, which ones? I believe one of them is Glenn Talbot. Yeah, he makes debut in issue 61. Yep, Glenn Talbot, who showed up here as a major before he's promoted lieutenant later on. And he's the craze of Stan Lee and Stico. We also debut in these issues of The Leader and The Abomination. And you're thinking, okay. The Leader himself, they did a really good job in here of him. Now, later in these issues, Samuel Stearns makes his debut in issue 62. Very sickly, very next issue just after the debut of Glenn Talbot. Excuse me. And it's also debuting here of uh, The Abomination makes debut in issue 90. Yes, issue 90. And you're thinking, wow, three important characters who make their debut in these issues. Yep. In the case of issue 60, well, it's basically Hulk versus the Chameleon. Yep, the Chameleon. Yeah, Chameleon pops up here as a recurring character in Hulk for some reason. I do not know the reason why that they decide to have Dimitri, well... Why you show up here for? Yeah, it's like basically that Stanley had nothing to do with Spider Man, so let's make a recurring fill on the pages of Tales of Tonish. A period issue 60, 61, 60, you prefer from 60 to 64, and 66. After that, he got moved back to Amazing Spider Man. Now you probably think, is he like the only one who shows up in these issues aside from the leader? Well, there's also Boomerang. Yeah, he makes his debut in these issues. Oh yeah, he makes debut issue 81. Yep. This is also the first appearance of the Secret Empire. Yep. And you're thinking, wait. You mean that awful event from six years ago? Oh no, no. The original version of the group. Not the event, the group. And for some reason, despite the fact that the first pair of pages of Hulk... 
They apparently associate with Captain America. Yeah, they're basically Captain America villains, despite the fact they show pages of Hulk. Yeah, and they appear from issues 81 to 85 of this run. Yeah, Hulk vs. Secret Empire. You're thinking, wow, that's a very strange number of issues for him. Yeah. Oh, by the way, the chameleon, he misses one issue. Oh, we also debuted in issue 65 of uh, Professor Strom, who was like a minor character, per se. Yeah. You think, okay, so we have Glenn Talbot, the leader, all debuting in these issues. Okay, what about the rest? Well, Boomerang stuff, his last is from 81, 85, 67. Had to take him on Kenga Kong. When we go with him on Mongolia for a single issue. Yep. For 68. More the leader. Yes. He takes the lead a lot in these issues. Oh yes, definitely. And you're thinking, how much does run does they take on the leader? Well, once they show up in issue 62, you become pretty much like the main villain of these issues. Until issue 74. He appeared for almost non-stop in issue 63. He only missed like Well, he once he left issue 174, then returned to 115. So that kind of ended the leader stuff, like with his apparent death. Yes, and Fubon, who made his debut in 73. Yeah, he's a minor character who only appeared in like two issues of Tales of Sonic. And they appeared in the Hulk years later. But what about 75 to 80, you might ask? Well. It's basically like the first parent to care named Arkham. King Arkham, who only appears for like two issues. Just 75 76, and that is it for him. Oh, and also, uh, prior to this, the name ward took over the book from Ant Man and basically took over. And we also have the appearance here by the Executioner. Yes, for some reason. Yeah, so. The Executioner, who also appeared in the previous issue, is it Scourge? Yes, it is Scourge. Who, yeah, for some reason he would fight the Hulk here, and then you find him again in Defenders. Yeah, I'm not sure why. And if you're curious, though, he only appeared from issue, he appeared from 76, 77, and then returned to issue 102. As for 78, Conrad, uh, Conrad Zexton, who appears for two issues before he dies. Yep. And you're thinking, okay, what about the rest of the issues? Okay. Well, we have Hulk Killer. Yep. Who appears for this issue and the following issue. That's it. Oh. And he's actually have, we have a return of Boomerang. I think they, wait, I thought you said he only appeared for 81, 85. Well, apparently appeared for that issue too. So, okay, he actually appeared from 81, not to, no, he didn't stop at 85. He actually skipped 85. His last appearance was issue 88 in the book. And according to this, he never appeared in the book ever again. After. He never brought the Hulk in after that one issue. Nope. Never did. Yeah, and then of course we have Hulk versus the Stranger. No, seriously. The frickin' Stranger. Because of reasons. Yeah, he fights him for three issues from 89 to 90. Oh, and by the way, in case you're curious though, like 89 91. Now, in the case of 90. Like, he had 90, he had just started fighting the Abomination. Yep. Yeah, issue 90, he just started fighting the Abomination. And what do you find for the rest of this era, you might ask? Well, I find 90, 90, 91. 
And then he showed up an issue of Silver Surfer, and then Thor, and he finally put, appeared again for that book. Yeah, I'm not really sure exactly why that was like that for. Case 92. Well, more stuff, just basically just moving stuff along here, but still really interesting stuff here when it comes to Hulk. Yeah, and then of course, basically, the very next issue sets up a brawl between him and the... It sets up basically a phrase with him and the Silver Surfer. Yep, the Silver Surfer. And then we have the first part, we have... The Hulk basically teamed up with High Evolutionary. You think, wait, High Evolutionary? Yes, you see, he gave you one of his Knights of Wondergore. Yeah. And you think, wait, High Evolutionary? What the heck? Yeah, he had, well, they had chronologically, let's see. Well, part, of, now mostly, here's the thing about High Evolutionary. Mostly put, he was a character first per page of Thor. Yeah, Thor. And I did just see him in the Guardians of the Galaxy movie, which seems strange. By the way, he appears for 94 to 96, and he appears for one more issue, Incredible Hulk. I just got more issues, and he doesn't find much after that. Nope, he's there for 95 96, and that's it. Yeah, High Evolutionary. Next one is Newman. Yeah. Which, I gotta admit, these issues are utterly Fantastic. Loved every single issue reading them. And I'm going to give this epic collection a 10 out of 10. Yep. But yes, that is definitely if to take of you. And that's the video tonight. So, tomorrow, the videos I mentioned last video. So, tomorrow. Bye.